This is a warehouse holding millions of pounds worth of my stock for my companies. I've sourced these products from around the world and I've done it in the most cost-effective, frugal way that I know possible. And in this video, I wanna show you all the tricks that I've got up my sleeve to save your business more money and become as profitable as possible. I don't care where you're at at business. The first stage of saving money is the mindset of frugality and cost saving. What I've learned over the last two decades of being in business is there's so many middle men putting on a 5 to 30% margin across the supply chain. That's just not fair for your business. Let's take this pen for example. I know this little fella is made in China. He would have been made in bulk and then sold to five different importing agencies. It'd be the same product, white labelled. That would have then come to the UK and then sold to a chain of stationary distributors. And then they would have sold to wholesalers and then the wholesalers would sell to the delivery people that deliver stationary to companies. In that little scenario, three, four, five different people have taken the product, all putting their margins on top, maybe up to 50%. Why not just go direct to the pen factory and source the thing yourself and save yourself that potential 50%? I know a lot of you are probably thinking, well, that's all right for you, James. You've got this big fat warehouse. You can store the stuff. You've got the cash flow to be able to do this. But I promise you, my mindset was this at 18, 19 years old. Wherever I could, I would try and cut out middlemen. And my experience from the 300 people that have been on my podcast, just a few of them think like that. And the majority just want an easy life and they'll just buy as cheap as they can on a quick Google search. But in this video, I want to show you how you can save considerably more by being a little bit more proactive and showing you how to get on a plane and actually find factories that will save you money. I want to show you some of the products that I bring in from around the world. This teddy bear was made in China. These glue activators and slime making kits were made in Turkey. I brought these foam stickers that are used for children's arts and crafts from China. This uniform that I make for all my sites made in India. And what I really want to get over in this video is you don't need to make a hundred thousand items of a single piece, which I think is what's in people's psyche. And that's why countries like Turkey are really good because you can usually get lower minimum order quantities rather than massive volumes, like for instance, in China. And that's another great thing about India. They're really good at making textiles, but not so good at making plastic pots uh, for ice cream or food. There's a little thing here that I really wanted to get over. This pot here is a paper pot that's actually non-recyclable. It's one of the big things about food packaging. It's got a wax lining inside which is needed for food. So this what looks like a paper pot is actually non-recyclable, made here in the UK. And it costs you about 35 pence with the full printing on. And that's before you put any bleeding ice cream in. This pot, which is fully recyclable because it's plastic, is made in Turkey and it costs you about eight and a half pence. 35 pence, eight and a half pence. And you don't need to make a million of them to save money. Actually, the minimum order quantities for this is only about 10,000. And when you get to build relationships that probably do your deal and bring that right down while you're building your business up, how do you get them cool deals? Well, you need to get on a plane and go and see these people to try and negotiate to get better cash flow terms, lower the minimum order quantities while you're building the business up. All those things are way easy to do if you put in the effort. And right now in this video, I wanna show you just how to do that. Let's go to Turkey. here at a factory in Turkey that makes all of our ice cream tubs. I recognize these. Um, and we're in the showroom now. We come here just because we're doing a lot of business with them, want to have good relationships with them and um, want to get new ideas. All these Napoli containers down here is where we make our scoop ice cream from. So yeah, that's what we're doing here. We're very tired because we've literally only slept three hours and we're straight into our first factory visit. I'm really looking forward to some shut eye. Even though we were dead tired, we needed to sit down with our partners in Turkey and discuss numbers, ordering patterns, before they showed us around their really impressive factory. And how, how much does each one of these machines cost? Uh, I don't know exactly, but I think it's around 250,000. We've got, and how many have you got in here? 
Right now, I think we have 39. 39. 39 times quarter of a million. Yeah. Oh. Do you make the machines in Turkey? No, no, we buy them from... Some of them we are buying from uh, Japan. Japan. Some of them from Korea. Day one of Istanbul, we've had eight and a half hours sleep, so everyone's feeling a little bit better. Um, and we're now going to some factories and shops, trying to source arts and crafts stuff to put into Teletastic and the new company we've created called Fabadusa because we're just supplying so much of this stuff. That's why getting on a plane and getting on the ground is one of the smartest things to do if you're into this sort of thing to really accelerate the growth of product range ideas, but also getting those prices down because relationships drive deals face to face so much better than Zoom. We're now really hunting around Turkey's factories and showrooms to find new products. We want to know pricing, minimum order quantities, how quick we can get the products and whether we think this is going to be a big hit. You, when you're on these buying trips all you're doing is blocking things up, converting to see the prices. £1.43 for this but then you decorate it yourself. I think that's quite expensive. It's all about getting into volumes. For the rest of the afternoon, we were literally shown hundreds of different arts and crafts items. We were looking for products that we could bring into the UK that were maybe a little bit more innovative, maybe they were better quality. Could we get a better margin on the stuff that we're already buying in? We wanted to know about those crucial minimum order quantities and how we can cash flow all these new innovative products. Even if we think they're good, we're not sure whether the UK market would like them. So we wanted to get our hands dirty, get painting, make some good stuff and see if we can put this into our children's arts and crafts company. The 500 is really for us to, to test the market. Mm -hmm. If it goes through it, we will order 5,000 pieces. It, mm -hmm. You know, it's not, but we just need to test it. That, that, that could be super popular and just go. And we're like, I was like, we're going to get more, more, more. <laughs> you know, but you just don't know, do you? Like, yes. We've just done plenty of playing around with arts and crafts, seeing new products. Things I want to know is what are the quantities, what are the minimum order quantities to bring in, especially if they're a new product. Because what I don't really want to do is order 10,000, 20,000 and one thing. I want to see if I can work with partners here in Turkey to do minimum order quantities, say 500, sell that into the market and then see if we can then turn that into a quantity product and then uh, make some money on it at that stage. I'm really prepared to, you know, just do it at break even, lose money even a little bit, just to see if it could be the next big thing. Because sometimes you get it right and sometimes you don't. You think you've got the best ideas, but actually putting it to the market is the best thing to do. And it's having partners in countries like this that allows us to accelerate the growth of our business. Family arts and crafts, children's arts and crafts are a big thing that I believe that we can be really good at. I just want to expand the range. We're already doing millions of revenue in the UK with it, but we could do with I don't know, another 400 products to really accelerate the growth of this business. That's why we're here. Here we are, second factory of the day, and now we're talking teddy bears. We're trying to get prices for teddy bears manufactured in Turkey. We do this in India at the moment, some in China, um, but because the volumes are growing, we want to just be in a situation where we've got really good supply chains. Because of COVID, those SWOT analysis on our business, what are the strengths, what are the weaknesses, what are the opportunities, and what are the threats? Well, the weaknesses and threats COVID taught us that supply chain issues can be just crushed down at an instant. That's why we've got super high inflation. And now supply chains are becoming more back to normal, we're seeing inflation come down. But just in case there's another epidemic in the next 10, 15 years, I want to be prepared. I want to make sure we've got good supply chains. So could Turkey be the new home of the Teddy-tastic teddy bear? Who knows? Let's go and find out. What I'm trying to just to ascertain is yeah, if it's similar, so we don't, we don't want it to be, well, obviously we want it to be cheaper, but we're not, the, 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 the benefits of here is getting it quicker. Uh, it's easier for us to come do R&D, flying to Turkey, like, I'd much rather do that than do a 20 hour flight to the Far East, you know, so. Can you do me a nice price? <laughs> <laughs> always struggle with this. You see where the eyes, 
That's why they make the, they need to make the eyes just a little bit bigger to pull the material away. Five thousand. I mean, they just ask if we wanted that exact bear, five thousand pieces. That will give us a steer whether this is worth spending time on it. So after we'd seen the showroom, we was taken downstairs into what was a TARDIS of a teddy bear factory. Literally hundreds of people were making these works of art. Some of the best teddy bears and plush toys that I'd ever seen. And I've been to lots of teddy bear factories. The quality control, the safety were brilliant. And it was really interesting to see how they operate in Turkey compared to other countries I've been around the world. putting it through the metal detector here to make sure no needles are left in the um, in the product. It's like to, whenever we use new factories, if we use these guys, I just want to make sure they're on that QC quality. And a teddy bear goes in, no noise. A teddy bear goes in, no noise. Quite like how they've got it set up, but nothing can get out of here unless it goes through there. Because you don't know if you've got oh, 500 sewing machines, all these people, you know, clipping and using metal and really sharp metal that something could just fall inside a teddy bear because it's porous. You know, that needle goes in. You want to make sure that they're really checking all that stuff. Yeah, it's good. And that's another factory tour done. That was my first time seeing a teddy bear making plush factory here in Turkey. I've been to lots in China and again in India, and I was really impressed with their quality control over here. Number of advantages, lower minimum order quantities, I think better quality products, and you can get the products much quicker. If we're ordering stuff from the Far East, I've got a factory in six, seven months maximum to get it. Over here, we've got a factory in maximum of 10 weeks, hopefully eight weeks. So for supply chain issues, that's really good. But again, where did Turkey get all their raw materials from? You've guessed it, the Far East and China. So there's always that worry about supply chain issues. But I think the problem is, it's gonna be more expensive. Uh, but if we can work on those price points and this could be a good option for us. We've now landed in Ankara, which is the actual capital of Turkey. And we're now visiting another factory, another arts and crafts factory here in Turkey. I don't know where we are, but uh, let's go and find out some more. We got to Ankara and within minutes, we were off to the next factory. We got to meet the owners of our sand art manufacturers, got a really good relationship with them, but we'd never actually met them. So it was important that we had a cup of tea or coffee in this case, Turkish obviously, and really built relationships. Makes it bounce. Yeah, it's like right, if you bounce, that's great. Oh, that is cold. That is good. Oh, don't put it in the sand. <laughs> that is so cool. These are called FSDUs, freestanding display units, and they obviously really help sell products. And um, this is actually very expensive to make these in the UK, and so obviously they they've worked out how to do it cheaper over here. So. We'll have a good go at this, but this is this is cardboard. I want to get it done like this, but in wood. And they'll know. I mean, look at that. That just sells a product. And so, get on the plane coming out here. See these ideas. <laughs> never would have got never would have got this without coming here, would you? I'm really excited. But imagine. If, but I think like if we put these out like a trade show. Now, anyone that watches my videos will know one of my primary factors of business is keeping the cash flowing keeps the business going. When you're holding lots and lots of stock, that actually ties up cash flow. And what the aim is to try and sell that stuff as quick as possible. Now, you've got many options that you can use here in the UK. You can use stocking finance, but that's really expensive. You can use invoice factoring. In my experience, that's even more expensive. 
I'm a typical entrepreneur and I work my cash as hard as possible. Now, whilst I'm prepared to take some risk, once you build up big relationships with suppliers and they're doing good levels of trade with you, they should, in my opinion, come in with you for the journey because the more that they can do with you, the more that they build their profitability. And if they can take some of the pain of cash flow of building your business because you're building theirs, then that's a question that you should ask them. And so by going to Turkey and actually meeting people, showing that I'm very serious about growing this business and working with them, I just ask those direct questions. I want to listen to this conversation. So in summary, no more deposits. We will pay you on dispatch. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you very much. That is very helpful. That means we will now spend more money with you. You free up our cash flow. Then we can do other things. That's very helpful. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And that now means that we've just improved our cash flow. How? Well, from that factory, we actually buy all of our coloured sand. We buy in tens and tens of tons, hundreds, thousands of tons of this stuff. And what we've had to do up till now was pay them a 30% deposit on order and not receive the stuff for four months. That's just how it usually works in importing. Let me explain to you what that can potentially mean. Say you put a, I don't know, £30,000 order out, three, six, £9,000 goes out you don't actually see that stock for up to three months and then you pay the balance and then you've got to give your customers credit oh absolute disaster now what we've decided that we can do is pay the deposit on dispatch that immediately frees up probably three months of cash flow for our business now we've still got to finance it but that makes a big big difference I just don't think I would have got that conversation over the line by having a Zoom conversation. Going out there, getting on a plane, makes a huge difference. I hope this video has opened your eyes to just how easy it is to find partners around the world and save your business some pennies for pounds. How easy it is to find and build relationships with the direct factories or products and services to accelerate the profits in your business. That's what we're all about. If you've got any questions or stuff that you feel like I haven't covered, please hit them in the comments below on the video or drop me a message on Instagram. You can follow me at James Sinclair Entrepreneur. I'd love to see you there. You can direct message me there. And if you want to learn some more stuff and you really want to grow your business, why not come along to one of my seminars? The tickets are only a few hundred quid. You can buy them on my website, jamesinclair.net, or there's a link in the video description. I literally love teaching my seminars. I do these amazing days where I just shower people with knowledge that I've learned over the last 20 years. Whether it's property investment, buying companies, or getting customers, I cover it all. Check it all out on my website, jamesinclair.net. In my opinion, I think that's the cheapest 300 quid investment you'll ever make to grow your business. See you at one of my seminars. Bye-bye.